Hold on to your shorts because this is where things get interesting. We're going to play the Tamiyo. Tamiyo comes down. Tamiyo minuses. Please let me do this. Please don't quit. Let's get a binding down. But the binding is a token. Token kills the Moonvale Regent. That's fine. We lose Tamiyo. Not a big deal. We activate a Seekus Chariot. A Seekus Chariot comes in. And when it attacks, it copies the binding. And now every single turn they play a permanent, we have a binding to kill it. Every turn. GG's my friend, you have officially lost this game. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel and thank you so much for clicking on today's video. Today's deck has taken me to my absolute peak of happiness and that is because we are playing a reanimator list which you all know i love but on top of that this thing has some of the most outrageous ridiculous combos you have ever seen a reanimator list pull off and uh yeah man to, to put it simply i just i cannot wait for you guys to see this thing go off but before I break this thing down in full, if you are new to the channel and you find any value in today's content, if you wouldn't mind hitting that subscribe button, it is a free way to help support the channel. Also, a like goes a very long way, and I'd appreciate that as well. Let's talk about it, guys, because I've never been so excited to talk about a list. I don't think ever. I'm so I'm having so much fun with this thing. But we started off with Tamiyo, completed Sage, a, a, a Planeswalker. I'm sure a lot of you were familiar with in the you know the uh, spoiler season. But this card is really sweet because you can only you can pay uh, mana for it or you can pay life to get this thing down a little bit early for a little bit less loyalty. But its plus ability allows you to tap an opponent's creature and it doesn't untap turn, it's untap step. Great way to protect itself, really great uh, tool. But it's minus X is where this card gets wild. If you build a deck around this properly, you could do some serious damage with the minus X. The minus X says you can exile a permanent card from your graveyard with the mana cost of X. Um, and you minus that much loyalty. That card gets exiled from your graveyard. You create a token of that card. It comes down onto the battlefield uh, right away. It, does it come down tap? No, it doesn't. It comes down as a token though. So what are we doing with Tamiyo? Well, we're trying to get a binding the old gods in a perfect world. We are trying to get a binding the old gods from the graveyard onto the battlefield as a token. Why is that so good? Well, I'll tell you why it's good. We run a full playset of a Seekers Chariot. That's why. So if by turn four we get a Seekus Chariot down and on the battlefield and follow it up on a turn five with a Tamiyo, we bring back a binding to kill one of our opponent's permanents. We swing in with the Chariot, bring another bindings in, kill something because the Chariot can copy tokens. So you're going to be copying binding the old gods over and over and over, which is going to ramp you immensely into your bigger spells at the same time you're just gonna keep eliminating threats on the other side of the battlefield. They're not gonna be able to play a permanent that's gonna be safe to this combination, which is really crazy. The other part of this list is the reanimator list that you'd see anywhere else. It's got the brand new card, uh, Okiba Salvage. This thing is gonna return a target creature card from the graveyard to the battlefield for five mana. We've seen this effect before, but what's good about this card is if we control an artifact and an enchantment, you get to put two one one counters on that creature that comes back. So. We do have a lot of enchantments. We also have artifacts. Another guy who gives us artifacts, Old Rutstein. Um, you know, we've got uh, another enchantment over here. We have Teachings of Kirin. Another new card that mills three cards to our graveyard. Great, because we want to reanimate stuff. It's also going to create us threats, get us 1-1 counters. And then when Kirin comes in as a creature, once it starts attacking, it's going to uh, exile things from graveyards, preferably your opponents. And we're going to be either creating more threats or we're going to be putting 1-1 counters on things. So it's kind of like a, a, a buff scavenging ooze kind of effect. And uh, we've matched up with, uh, you know, Wither Bloom Command as a way to mill us and get more value. Um, a brand new card too, Colossus Sky Turtle. You're going to be seeing a lot of this. This card works really well with our deck because if we get it into our hand, we can channel it to either get a card back from our graveyard or we can bounce something our opponent has uh, back to their hand. This goes to the graveyard. We get to uh, bring it back later with, you know, our salvage and whatnot. And then, of course, we have a, Vor a Vorinclex because we're trying to alt Tamiyo today and a Hole Breaker Horror because it's probably the best creature you can think of reanimating. Uh, two cards that work really well with this is we got the Abandoning Mire because it mills three cards and you return a uh, creature or Planeswalker, so it works really well with our deck. And we've got the Endures. Uh, this right here is fairly powerful, especially with all the uh, artifact and enchantments going around, but I'm trying to talk so fast, I'm like running out of breath. 
uh, there's so much to go over here, but we'll go in depth a little bit further at the end of today's video. Enjoy this gameplay footage because I'm telling you, especially the last two games, it gets wild. <laughs> Enjoy, guys. We'll see you back here at the end for some final thoughts. Peace. All right, so this is the first time I've ever like was in the middle of playtesting and trying to build a deck and really got upset at myself for not recording <laughs> because we figured out how to use Tamiyo pretty good and Tamiyo pops off, man. And I'm really excited to show this deck because it is pretty ridiculous. All right, we get to go first. This is actually a really good starting hand. We got a nice curve out here into a Retstein, which leads into a soul transfer. Yeah, this is going to be solid. Solid, baby. Let's go. Demir colors. Let's see what that's all about. Oh, not the best, not the best mill there, but it is what it is. We want to keep our lands in our deck and draw, but chariots are already in hand, so we don't really want that in the graveyard. Okay. Let's put this in for what? Green? Probably green, right? All right, they take the two. No instant speed nonsense. Uh, let's go ahead and play the Rutstein. If Witherbloom Command was instant speed, that would be pretty awesome because it could take care of the two drop. Um, you know. Oh, actually, it doesn't hit creatures, right? Yeah, it doesn't hit creatures. Non, non creatures permanents. I was thinking Soren Thought Thief, but it didn't actually apply. All right. We do need to get another black source out of the yard, which we do have the Shipwreck Marsh. That's annoying. All right, we get another insect. Interesting, interesting. What to do here, actually? What do we do? Do we go with the Seekers Chariot or do we go with Witherbloom Command? I think I go with the Chariot here because we have so many tokens to just copy. We might as well probably go with the Chariot here. I am afraid of like sweepers like Shadow's Verdicts, but there's still two lands off that. I don't know. I feel like we just beat him down here. This is not how we typically win a game, but uh, I'll take it. I will take it. I could have gone the safe route and Witherbloom commanded and got back a Vornclex next turn, but all right, they go for two here. So everything but the Rutstein dies. It's pretty brutal because they gain a lot of life. That's the part I don't like is how much life they just gain there. Tough. All right, so we do get the... Uh, We do get back the Vorinclex right now if I want to, but I don't know if I really want to just a second here. I think I uh, think I'd rather do a little more setup here. Rebuild the board just a bit. Get to kill the Meat Hook Massacre too, which is kind of clutch. <clears throat> it's kind of clutch. And then next turn, I will have a token come down. Or, I'm sorry, we get a token down. And then we get the Vorinclex in. We can crew off the Vorinclex, but that seems kind of lame. Binding. Oh, okay. Well, there goes the Asika's Chariot plan anyway, so whatever. What do we got in the yard here? Man, obviously Vorinclex is the best card, right? But it's like, it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense right now. I have a feeling, I just have a feeling it's going to get spot removed, right? Like that's, you guys are probably wondering why I'm so nervous. I like things like binding and they could have potential sweepers that I just don't want it to die. And if I got the Asika's Chariot, I feel like I might have got a little more long-term value out of it. But I, I think we just need to just get over it, attack in here, and, and get them close to dead. So that's where we're at right now. If they exile everything here or destroy everything like that, like I thought they might, um, we do get the, you know, the Karin, the Kirin. So that works out pretty good. Also, we just drew a Tamiyo, which feels pretty awesome. Not enough removal, though. They didn't get the job done. It's over, my friends. Tamiyo top deck was pretty sweet, though. 
let's just attack in here. I feel like a jerk for playing this. I wanted to play Tamio just to show you guys, but let's just attack. Let's not, let's not be too mean. Let's not be too mean. We got the dub. <laughs> we'll, we'll show, we'll showcase Tamio here in a minute. Uh, but yeah, man, good start. Like I said, this deck is actually pretty sweet. All right. Not a bad first game. Uh, we did lose the Vorinclex like I thought we would. That's what, that's I know that seems kind of strange. Like who would complain about a five drop Vorinclex? You know what I'm saying? Especially when it's coming in with the value of those tokens or those one one counters on them. But it's just uh, you know the removal was there, and I was just like this. They're they're running a lot of black. I was getting a little concerned about it, but we were able to pull it together, get the W, run them over, easy W. Plus I I, I like to try to combo off. You know what I'm saying? I, I'd like to get a Vorinclex down and then follow it with like immediately a Tamio. That would be kind of nice. All right, we get to go first. This is a definite keepable hand here. So I learned from past mistakes there. Uh, you want to play the teachings first before the Witherbloom command because the teachings will mill three cards off the top of your deck. And then Witherbloom command has more of a chance of definitely hitting that land drop. Because sometimes you Witherbloom command and you don't actually even hit a land and then you feel really sad. <laughs> Fading hope, okay. I have nothing to put the 1-1 counter on. That's actually pretty good. We drew the Sky Turtle, by the way. Great card for this deck. I think it works really well. Opponents running green. Let's try to get the Rut Steam down. I don't know if it resolves, but we're going to try it. We're going to give it our best shot here. Hopefully Rutstein hits. Rutstein is so, it's like such a value engine. It's, it's ridiculous. All right. So no Jawari disruption. I like to see that, but they did have instant speed. Uh, maybe it is Jawari disruption and they just chose that, you know, they want the land over the counter. I don't know. All right. We got all of our stuff going online here. We got a treasure off of that play. Let's go here. Vornklex in the yard. Love to see it. Let's grab a dual land. We uh, can't play anything on this turn anyways. Let's go in for an attack. End turn. We can bounce something with the Sky Turtle. Um, is it sorcery speed only? Uh, return target. No, it's not sorcery speed. All right. We don't want to bounce that though. And by the way, we have enchantment and artifact. So this card is going to be able to return a card from our graveyard to our hand. And uh, also kill the turtle. The cultivator. Wow, we can get Vorin Clex down already. <clears throat> kind of bonkers. Uh, what else do we have? Vorin Clex in the yard, too. Um, I feel like if I play Vorin Clex, I might get it bounced right back to my hand, which could be pretty brutal. But they are tapped out for this turn, so they will have to take the six this time around i am eating treasure for it too which seems kind of meh but you, you like i said it's uh it's gonna be all right can't attack in with the kirin it, it kirin being able to attack in is always tough like it always seems like by the time it becomes itself it's a one one and there's too many threats on the field to get through an attack but once we start opening things up with infinite bindings it can get pretty pretty ridiculous all right, the top deck you want to see here is going to be a Tamio, obviously, because we have Vorinclex on the field. These new lands are like, they look so clean, man. So clean. All right. Ooh, a memory deluge. Oh, they're, they're in trouble. They are in trouble here, ladies and gentlemen. No answer, but a memory deluge. Looking for land, I'm sure they find it. Uh, more land. That that's actually kind of scary though, because if I don't kill them right here and now, that's a lot of land that they can uh do some stuff with, like a you know Colossus, the uh the giant that allows our opponent to um bounce everything. But look what we top decked, ladies and gentlemen. Look what we top decked. So we're gonna actually get the Tamio notebook here. We're sp I wanted to alt Tamio. 
Why? Don't quit, man. I wanted to alt Tamio. We were going to get the Tamio notebook where I was about to explain to you guys that spells cost two less to cast and you draw a card every time you tap it, which is once a turn. Ah, man. You're kidding me. That win right there actually brings the total to four and one with this deck. So we are just, we are cooking with this thing. This thing is not bad, man. And we've won almost in different ways every time, which is crazy. I just really wish you guys could have seen the, uh, the win where we copied like eight <laughs> bindings. It was really nice. We were against the cleric stack. It was really awesome. All right, we get to go first. This is not bad. Turn three, turn four play going first. Binding and we've also got a lot of removal here with the transfer, which is pretty sweet. This card is actually really, really good uh, in this deck. <laughs> Anywhere else, maybe not as good, but in this deck, not bad. All right. Going for Rutstein here. Rutstein here. What do we get? A land. Nice. We get the ramp up. Love to see that. A little bit of an early Vorinclex. And uh, we're up against an Esper Artifacts deck. So copying this binding is going to be pretty important. So that's a 3-4 Prodigy's Prototype. And it says when one or more vehicles you control attack, create a 1-1. One, one. Pilot token with this creature's crew view. Ooh, okay. So that's got to go, right? I mean, pretty obvious that's got to go. The more bindings on this particular matchup, the better. So happy to, happy to draw it. Happy to draw it. This thing adds more mana, by the way. Ooh, this thing allows you to return with haste. That's really good. Um, at the beginning of combat on your turn, return vehicle card or graveyard. Ace turns on hand. So it does it every combat? At the beginning of combat on your turn. Every combat it does that, you're telling me. That's pretty... It's pretty intense. Well, that's gonna have to go, unfortunately, my friend. Easy, easy decision for me there. All right, we do have a blood token, which is awesome, but I don't think I want a blood token Vorinclex away like I would normally typically do because we've got the mana to actually play it. So there's the prodigy again. They can't bring it in yet to attack, says so summoning sickness. That's a card. That's a card and a half. All right, let's go ahead and play this for what? Blue or black? Probably black. So if we play this, we have what left over? We have two mana left over. Oh, that's not enough to get the job done. I was hoping we were going to be able to bounce that right away, but we're not going to be able to. So maybe let's hold this, flash it in this next turn. That seems pretty good. The three, four. Yeah, they're going to create. They're going to create another little person here that crews for cheap but i'm totally fine with that we flash in hole breaker horror and then we bring in vorinclex right after and it is ggs i don't see how you come back from that i don't see how you make a a comeback from that sequencing of a place that's gonna get ugly because that's seven damage that's six damage that's yeah that's a that's a, that's a hefty amount they are gonna create a little blocker guy but I will have the options to either bounce it or bounce something else. <clears throat> Alright, as long as enchanted permanent is a creature, it gets 1-1 one, one for each creature or vehicle you control. Okay, that's a lot. <clears throat> Pretty cool combos. I uh, I do like the artifact crewing deck, but uh, haven't been able to get one to, to win for me. <laughs> so kind of abandoned that idea for now. I didn't want to do the same Selesnia one everyone's been doing, but, um, but yeah, it just hasn't been panning, panning out for me. Another whole breaker horror. That's just, that's just too mean to play. I'm going to play the Vorinclex because the other, other way around is a little mean. Let's do this and then we will play this on this.
I don't have an enchantment, huh? I don't have an enchantment. Sad day. Oh, there's the scoop. Yeah, I mean, can't blame him. You can't blame him. I mean, that was that was about as ugly as it gets. You're facing down a whole breaker horror and a, a Vorn Clex, and I'm about to bounce this back to your hand too. Like no blockers. Sheesh. <laughs> I think I might have found my new main deck here. Can't seem to lose, but we are playing a lot of really cool things and a lot of different uh, creative type of decks too. Um, you know, we haven't played a whole lot of like mono green, mono white, the uh, the typical, even the ores off control. Like I'd love to see how we uh, fare against those decks. I think ores off control, we actually have a pretty decent deck against them. Obviously exiling effects are always problematic, but um, as far as like their permanents that they typically run, like their Edgar, you know, their, their, what is it, Lolths and stuff. We have ways to exile their stuff as well. And we have a lot of binding effects. Okay, we go first. This is a slow hand, but we're going to keep it anyways because we go first. Um, if it was turn one, I wouldn't keep this. I just wouldn't. All right, if we went, if we went first, I wouldn't. If we went second, I'm sorry, my wife just walked in and I was like really distracted. <laughs> I am not even speaking English right now. All right, we are going to discard this and return this probably. We'll see. We'll see what they end up playing here. We might actually bounce their next play here. The Colossus Sky Turtle though, dude, busted. Very busted card. That is probably going to be the card we bounce here. All right, Sky Turtle did its thing. Now we get down the teachings, which is pretty nice because we follow up with the Asika's Chariot. <clears throat> we'll have a good blocker for the Usher of the Fallen here. Yeah, this is this is gonna be good. I feel like things are starting to line up here for us. I feel like they're lining up okay. Oh, but they get down their Spellbinder. Hopefully they take the Tamiyo because they don't know like how good it you know is, and then maybe they get scared of it, but. I think uh, a Sickest Chariot's the play, if I'm being honest. Yeah, they know. They know. They know. You can't fool them. Shoot. Well, I can play this on turn four. Uh, but it comes in. It comes in with how much loyalty. I haven't actually had the opportunity to do this yet. Two fewer loyalty, so three. I can get something back for two, which doesn't, doesn't help very much, does it? Um, blue. Could tap that though. Hey, you know what? Let's try it. We haven't, uh, two, three, four. We haven't given this a shot yet. We've never actually had to cast this for its cheaper loyalty, but we do get to tap the elite spellbinder, so it can't attack anyway. So it protects itself really nicely here. So might actually buy us a bit of time. In this particular instance could be pretty solid. Might have to get back the Sky Turtle here. Yes, we get land, dude. I was really stressing about whether or not we were going to hit land here. So I'm very happy we found the land drop. Let's get back our Sky Turtle as a defense. Sky Turtle back in. Plus this bad boy. Um, you know what? If you want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with my Sky Turtle, you can. I'd rather you not have lifelink. Our will cannot be denied. <clears throat> you want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the turtle? Let's do it. Turtle's got ward, by the way. It's got a ward too. Alright, they don't activate the cave, which I'm really happy about. I think... I don't want to highlight it because I don't want to give them any ideas, but... I think it's... Five. Okay, so they can't even activate it right now. Okay, well now going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Sky Turtle is a little scary. You guys are going to end up killing it. I don't like that. Shoot. Do we have a binding in here? We, we do have a binding in here. Okay, we can get back the binding. Nice. All right, so we are going to trade, though, with the turtle in the binder. I will take it. I will take it. It's not ideal. It's not ideal, but it is what it is. All right. Could bring the sky turtle back again, tapping down something, but... Yeah, I might have to. Recovery, no. Hmm. Let's get back to Sky Turtle. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and minus this. Let's 
get back our binding. You still have a role in our grand story. And we will play the recovery as a land so we can get the Asika's Chariot in. No attacks. Doing pretty solid right now. We are actually handling Mono White with ease, I think, at the moment. Um, that's annoying, though. They can hit the turtle, too, because it's Ward 2, so they can actually get through that ward. Ouch. That's not good. Brutal Cathar. Yeah, that's pretty brutal. Happy to make that exchange. Keep Tammy alive another turn. Seems fine to me. Seems fine to me. All right, let's get another land. Another land. <clears throat> Seek his chariot. And we tap down something here until next turn. You. And then uh, we got some good blocks. I can't copy the binding this turn, though, which feels bad, which would have been really nice. Wish Asika's Chariot could have came in and just swung right away. We could have copied the binding and then it would have been over, but that'd be a little too overpowered. They're going over the top here to kill the Tamio. Don't blame them. Tamio did some absolute <laughs> numbers against them, or, uh, you know, against them in this matchup. So <clears throat> I do not blame them for wanting to get over the top and kill it here. Rutstein. Not exactly the card I was hoping to see, but you never know. It might get us something good. I don't know. Alright. Can't play two spells either, because if I play two spells, opponent's uh, brute will transform, and they can just steal another creature here. Alright, let's just keep building our battlefield presence. Um... Good news is, though, if I can find a way to kill the Brute, which we do have ways to kill it, um, eventually, we do get back a very big, very big Sky Turtle. Wish I would have drawn this a little later in the game where I didn't need it as land because I could have got back, you know, a creature or Planeswalker from the grave, which would have been really awesome. All right, so they're going to offer this trade. That seems really strange to me, but I will take it. Ah, that makes sense. Okay. That makes sense. The Wandering Emperor does do some stuff. Remember your training. It does some things. Alright, what are you going to take, my 2-2 cat? Makes sense. Alright, can I top deck some absolute amazing stuff here? No, I can't. I can't. Why not? I can't even crew my cat. Oh, this is savage. This is savage. I can't even crew my cat. I let him transform the Brutal Cathar. Big yikes. I have so much mana. <laughs> I'm good on mana. So if we could just maybe get back, I don't know, a really good spell. We haven't drawn any of our big boy creatures except for one sky turtle. So that is definitely a possibility. You know, some removal would be nice too. If I could just get one of these to just kill the Brutal Cathar or... Dude, there's so many things I could draw right now. That would be really good. All right, I'm actually going to block with the Redstein here. I don't think I want to mill out any more cards anyways. It's not a big deal. All right, let's protect our life total the best we can. They are gaining a lot of life, though. Binding! Okay, so binding gets us back a Sky Turtle. We can block in the air. We still probably die, though. Overall, we probably die. We take three from this, so not fun. We do get back the Sky Turtle, though. And we pass the turn, pretend we still have a play in the hand. I'm just holding on to this land to maybe make them shake a little bit in their boots. But it doesn't matter. They go over the top with this for three, four, five, six. And I have to block that or that, and then I die. So that is GG's, unfortunately. All right, so we take the elegance mono white. Uh, 
yeah i mean we went we went toe for toe or toe to toe with them on that one it was uh it was a good game i feel like there's a lot of good back and forth there so i'm not too upset about it um this is keepable we need to top deck some really good things here but uh i feel like it's keepable we have turned two and three plays so it's a two two run in haste at the beginning of end step returns to the hand discard draw a card interesting interesting i definitely didn't need a second rutstein that's for sure all right so they're gonna keep getting in there with these ronins i do have the rutstein to block here in a moment with which is gonna be nice all right let's get the one one might need a block with the one one to be honest but i also get to put a one one counter on it to potentially kill one of those if i let these get through okay so that's that's better that's better. Um, we'll take the three. All right, let's get Redstein in. It's a big body. Redstein's a very big body. All right, we get treasure. I love that. Love the treasure. Get to ramp up, hopefully into a Colossus turtle here soon. Four, five, six, seven, four, five. Okay. Ronins are coming in. I am going to trade with one of the Ronins here and I'm going to just basically bounce off of the storm seeker here bounce off that trade with that play with fire that's fine i still have another red steam so that's fine they should have probably played that one before they attacked they could have got more damage in all right seven enchantment and an artifact here so i can double down on this bad boy which is to exile their creature and then also grab a creature or planeswalker from the yard um i'm just gonna play redstein again i think i'm gonna play redstein again because uh again we just bounced off the storm seeker now we're ramping even more which is nice this is good this is fine uh one one and has haste all right and it reconfigures got it got it got it <clears throat> so i can bounce that back to their hand if i want to um which i probably will that's super annoying this deck is pretty annoying i can't lie um Do I want to bounce those? I don't know. I'm in a bit of a pickle here. Um, let's do it. Let's kill one of those. I'm getting tired of them. Let's get rid of one of them. blood token okay that does activate this again let's go ahead and kill this real quick kill this get us another land this is a very mental game here i'm trying to figure out how to uh approach it all right we're gonna get another one one here which i will definitely sacrifice as a blocker to their hasty storm seeker we're doing all right though man we're doing all right we're 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 coming through this. All right, so deals one damage to whatever target, right? Okay, whenever you cast this, your next creature spell is turn. Additional 1-1 one, one counter on it. Got it. Okay. That's fine. Even if it attacks. All right. So let's blood token this away. Nice. Ah, we we lose our artifact though. That's tough. Uh, that was a that was a gamble, and I lost the gamble. All right, so I don't get to return anything from the yard. Let's. This is a one drop. Let's kill that. Let's kill that. That's gone. We get another land. Keep hitting our land drops. You're gone. 
I think we still leave back the Rutstein for defense. Obviously, they have things with haste that have two power. So let's leave Rutstein back for defense. Obviously, they can activate their land too to come in for an attack. All right. Another Reckless Storm Seeker, which we can exile again. All right. We get a treasure now. Let's go, dude. Okay. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Do we have a Seeker's Chariot in here? Noah seek a chariot in here, huh? Interesting. Let's bring back a sky turtle. All right. And they discard to draw a card. Okay, they're getting a little desperate. I like it. I like it. All right, and uh, let's end our turn. Let's save our mana here. Let's save our mana. All monitor. Some of you guys might be like, why didn't you get the whole breaker horror? It's a better card than the sky turtle. And it is, but there's there's no permanence that we're gonna really get a whole lot of value off of bouncing here. So the sky turtle being, you know, a flyer getting over the top, it has ward. I think it's a, I think it's an okay play. Um, all right, we get to seek his chariot. We get in the Seeker's Chariot here. Um, maybe I bring that back. And play it. I want to do the combo so bad for you guys. I'm playing literally not very good because I'm tr I'm just trying to do a combo that I, I pulled off in the playtesting that I think is so cool that I want you guys to see, man. I want you guys to see it so bad. And I think we're about to do it. I think we're about to do it. We get to seek his chariot in. It's a lot of defense. All right, we get the one one counter. We'll put it on here so we can get through this hall monitor. Oh, they are going to activate their land, though. Well played, sir. But I still get to kill your land, so I'll take it. I'll take it still. Still not bad. Regent, that's going to draw them cards. That's not a bad play. But we activate the combo, ladies and gentlemen. Hold on to your shorts because this is where things get interesting. We're going to play the Tamio. Tamio comes down. Tamio minuses. Please let me do this. Please don't quit. Let's get a binding down. But the binding is a token. Token kills the Moonvale Regent. That's fine. We lose Tamio. Not a big deal. We activate a Seekus Chariot. A Seekus Chariot comes in. And when it attacks, it copies the binding. And now every single turn they play a permanent, we have a binding to kill it. Every turn. GG's, my friend. You have officially lost this game. That's the combo I've been trying to get off this whole time for you guys, man. I did it twice in playtesting, and I've just been, like, trying so hard to make it happen, man. So hard. Let's go. Oh, I'm so happy we did it. All right, we accomplished the goal of trying to get the combo off. So now it's time to just take it easy, play some try hard, you know, play the whole breaker horror when the opportunity arises and whatnot. All right, this hand is good enough. Good enough. Okay. No snow mana, huh? So it's black. Is it white? It is. Okay, so it's going to be Orzov. Orzov. All right, so this is going to be pretty important, I think. <clears throat> already disputing. Already getting tons of card value. Mono black and orzov just generate an absurd amount of card value especially in best of one when you can sort through your deck in a matter of like a few turns just with a couple disputes and then you got the uh treasure mechanic it's just it's all busted it's crazy really good combos i think orzov's in a place right now in a better place than it's been in a long time another shambling ghast okay the vanishing versus that i can actually I actually don't mind that. I'm glad they vanishing versus that over other things. All right, we can kill 
the shambling gas or we could kill a treasure take away their ramp mechanic or take away their gas and giving them more ramp wow we missed the land out of all of that mill are you kidding me that's not good i didn't expect that i didn't expect that i thought for sure we'd hit at least one land six cards deep in the deck but six cards deep and we missed the land drop that's wild okay i guess it just wasn't meant to be now watch just all three of these cards are going to be lands off the top we're like nine cards deep and you're telling me we're 10 cards deep and we haven't found one land that's crazy all right wedding announcement all right all right i think do i have a binding in here we do okay bindings in the in the yard um sure i'll make that trade why not let's go we hit a land holy holy toledo all right get the cats <clears throat> we're gonna get the uh we're gonna get the uh kirin next turn and uh hopefully another land if we get the land the combo's popping off let's go land <laughs> can we do it twice that would be pretty wild another wedding announcement not a problem if like i said if we find that land we're gonna be golden i mean we better get a land after all of that milling we did the odds of a land are so high right now game on baby game on here we go again here we go again they're not gonna like this they hit me with a year go earlier and i didn't forget about that so i'm salty about it and i'm going to enjoy this i'm going to enjoy this very much I'm going to enjoy this against the your go kind of guy very very much Say goodbye to your wedding announcements <laughs> Am I salty or what I love it. I love it All right my turn ready my turn Listen don't your go me you know what I'm saying Especially when the game's just starting out. Don't your go me. Now I gotta win this game though. I can't I can't your go him and then not win the game. Uh the good news is though, the Asika Chariot is going to continue to copy the binding over and over again. And uh we're gonna gridlock him out of this game. They are toast. But they do have blood on the snow, things like that, so they could kill my stuff. Also, they could attack here and just kill Tamio, which is kind of annoying. I want Tamio to survive, obviously, but um, if they do double attack though, it does open up for an attack back. Okay. No need to protect it. No need to protect. This is not how our story ends. Now we're never gonna miss a land drop, so that's kinda nice. Meat hook massacre. No more land drop misses here. We are we are gonna be ramping. Four days. All right, say goodbye to your meat hook. And we're just going to go ahead and beat you down to a pulp, baby. Let's go. Biting the old gods, just getting copied every turn is so insane. Oh man, we're just gonna take every land out of our deck too. It's nice. So no matter what we top deck from here on out, no matter how big the creature or the play, we just gonna have unlimited mana here. We have the Colossus Sky Turtle. Pretty sure we can play it now. Let's see. Three, six, seven, eight, four, five, six, seven. Yep. 
Colossus Sky Turtle is in play, which will protect us from the uh, cave. All right, Lolth coming in. That's fine. It's going to die to the binding. You could have such power. Do what I demand. That's pretty cool. Any big creatures in the yard? Oh, let's get our let's get our free land here. Um, a Colossus Sky Turtle is in the yard. So you know what? Let's do this. Let's do this. That seems pretty awesome. And Phyrexian. All right, let's play this. Let's do this. Let's not get our Asika's Chariot killed here. Attack in. We love to see it. The 2 1 doesn't untap. They can activate their cave. Who cares? <laughs> Who cares? We are just. We are just having a blast right now. Holy cow. This is one of the silliest things I've ever done. By far one of the silliest things, but pretty, pretty productive. I can't lie. It's pretty powerful. Uh, we've already seen him use what? Two meat hooks. All right. They're going to, <laughs> they oblivion my Asika's chariot. They also oblivion Tamiyo. Okay. They finally stopped the combo. Sad day. Um, let's get down the Colossus Sky Turtle. Colossus Sky Turtle. Well, now the combo's offline, so hopefully we can still win this game. I might have got a little cocky here. We'll see. We will see. I like that play because they still are going to be forced to make a block here that they're not going to be happy with. Yep. So if they want to keep playing Leg uh, Legion Angels all day long, then we're just going to win that. Uh, we're going to win that battle all day. Um, I'm afraid of sweepers here, so I am going to hold. I'm going to hold this for now. I could I could get back the uh, Asika's Chariot with this and it would get two one one counters, which would be pretty awesome, but uh, Oh, right of oblivion. Do they have enough? They don't have enough for the ward. What are you doing? What are you doing? You don't have the ward Feels bad man Feels bad a man. All right, uh, let's do this Oh, they scoop it up. I was about to hit the salvage, which was going to allow us to put two one one counters on our sky turtle. Feels bad. They did not pay attention to the ward. They got what they deserved, though. <laughs> GG. That is going to do it for today's gameplay footage, guys. Thank you so much for watching this far into the video. We are about to break this thing down and talk about it in depth a little bit more. But before I do that, just got to give a huge shout out and personally from me to you for making it this far because you do help the algorithm here on YouTube push my videos out to more people when you stay this long. So thank you so much for that. I really do appreciate it. Let's talk about the list, man. Um, yeah, the combos on this thing are bonkers. I, I really, really enjoy this list so very much and I'm having a lot of fun if you can't tell, but Tamio is busted. One thing I learned about this card, I was very nervous about the abilities on this card because you know, for five mana, five loyalty, that's pretty good, obviously, but its ability to just plus one to tap something didn't seem that great to me. But when you pay four and you, you know, deal two to yourself to just get this down early, that plus one actually does really well to kind of protect Tamiyo a lot better than I thought it would. Um, and yeah, man, I, I have no qualms about this card. This thing is sweet. A big fan. And I think we could do a lot more with this, to be honest. I think we can go even beyond what we were doing here today uh, to do a little bit more. But the Asika's Chariot Binding Combo is ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. Um, if there's one thing about this deck that I wish I would have done a little bit more with, 
is find some way to get more card value, like more drawing cards, things like that. Uh, one thing I would potentially want to add to this list would be a memory. Oh, memory. My dyslex uh, dyslexia is crazy. All right. Uh, memory deluge. Memory deluge is a card that's allowing us to draw cards, but if it gets thrown into the graveyard, which it probably will sometimes, you're going to be able to play it for its flashback cost. So I think it would fit really well into this deck. And it also helps you find the pieces you need late game, right? So um, the biggest problem I've had with this deck, you know, and, and trying it out and then also recording with it is that uh, late game, if we do end up, you know, top decking or opponents, you know, grinded us out to the point where we're we're just trying to hit, you know, the nuts off the top of the deck. It's really hard to do. So to get something like Memory Delusion a deck to get us more card value is really, really good. Uh, at the same time, I don't think Teachings of the Kyrian did a whole lot for us, to be honest. I don't think this card is as good as I originally thought for the deck. I think it can be cut um, maybe for that Memory Delusion. Obviously, it ups the curve quite a bit, but I think we're doing just fine with, you know, maybe four Witherbloom commands and then... A full play, play set of Rutstains. I think you're fine. This removal card, top notch. This thing is so good for the deck. I don't even think I um, addressed it on the breakdown. I was going too fast, but this thing right here, being able to exile a creature, a planeswalker, and bring something back from the graveyard, it is ridiculous when you're talking about, you know, enchantment artifact controls, which we have a lot of. But on top of that, we will need to probably replace the teachings of Kirin with another enchantment because then we won't see this effect, you know, of being able to play both sides of this or get back uh, <clears throat> a creature and put two one one counters on it as much if we're if we're running this card or if we uh, if we cut the teachings right. So another enchantment maybe could go into the slot to to give us better effect to get down, you know, the soul transfer, whatever it may be. Um, I do think it needs to be cut though. I don't think teachings did its, its job the way I thought it would. Um, as far as the rest of the deck, I think it played really, really well. Um, Holebreaker Horror, a great card, but if you're not running a bunch of instant and sorcery cards, you're not really bouncing a whole lot of things. Like if you're playing Holebreaker Horror, you typically want like really cheap things like Fading Hopes, uh, you know, Blood Chief Stars, things that you can play for cheap, bounce, and just wipe your opponent's whole board up really easily. So the fact that we play a little bit more of an expensive deck um, and permanent based, Holebreaker Horror may want to change that out for like a Tox Rill or something. You can get, you could have fun with that. You can change that out for any sort of creature. Burning Rune Demon too. That could be pretty good to get some more card selection. But um, overall, that's all I really have to say about the deck. I think it's a lot of fun. Um, I'm personally having a lot of fun with it. I'm going to probably continue to play it and tweak it even more. But I hope you guys enjoyed this one. It, it was definitely a pleasure to play this one for you guys and put it together. So really happy with how it came out. And uh, before I get out of here and we get into recording the next video for tomorrow huge shout out as always goes to the mardu mob man thank you guys so much for everything you do i really appreciate my mardu mob so much these are the best of the best here on the channel they are absolute savages they they help support the channel financially through your membership program on top of that they are very kind uh amazing people who constantly uplift me every single day and give me a reason to record for you guys so thank you so, uh, so much to the mardu mob if you guys want to become part of the Marty Mob, you can hit the join button down below or the link in the description to learn more about it. But that'll do it for now. I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace. Hit him three times like a hat trick. The name is says you know Patrick. Yeah, yeah. If you play him, then it's tragic. Hit him with the mythic. Yeah, that's magic. Yeah. MTG, that's what you'll see if you like and subscribe. Where's the upload, man? Uh, man, all of the time. Coming with the best decks to the meta. This ain't cheap, yeah.